I once said in a video that Black Ops 4 is my least favorite zombies, aside from Vanguard, of course. And I got a lot of comments saying that my opinion was wrong and that Black Ops 4 is actually great. And it got me thinking, if these people are so passionate about this game, why am I not? The conclusion was rather obvious, I hadn't played enough. And so in this video, I beat every Black Ops 4 map for the first time. And honestly, I feel like I went to the school of Call of Duty and got a degree in zombies. As cringe as that sounds. But if you played Black Ops 4 zombies, you know what I mean, because these maps are crazy. Dead of the Night. The first map in the chronological chaos storyline takes place on the 20th of March, 1912 at Alistair Rhodes Manor, where Alistair has invited friends and family. Unfortunately though for Alistair, he was knocked out as the guests were arriving and locked in his own wine cell. This was at the hands of his own butler who was under the control by a cult known as the Order. Whilst under the cult's influence, he begins to draw symbols on the floor in a circle. Some curious guests approach him, but at that very moment, the members of the cult activate an artifact. The artifact releases a substance called Prima Materia, which at the time was a very rare yet incredibly powerful substance. It is in fact the catalyst for the entire chaos story. After Prima Materia was released from the artifact, the environment turned into the undead. Only the characters within the drawn symbols are safe from the effect. This situation is known as a trial, and it was created by a group called the Nine, who are currently the only ones in possession of Prima Materia. Material. The trial is to determine whether someone is worthy of acquiring the substance, and so the trial lasts till the champions die or succeed. So our mission is to beat the trial, which includes a werewolf that was created from the Prima Materia. This was my first time playing Dead of the Night, and this map is very charming. This is definitely one of my favorite maps on Black Ops 4. So the first thing I do is interact with this Sentinel artifact. I then build these silver bullets and put it on my Spitfire, and now I can open this entrance here. This entrance leads to the Pack-a-Punch, and then I werewolf spawns in which is very easy to kill with the extra damage of the silver bullets. This is not by any means the werewolf at the end of the map. I then grab the Alice's Folly and upgrade it. This wonder weapon is amazing. Again, probably my favorite on Black Ops 4. I then had to move all three of these beams until they all shined and this would force the laser to chop off the statue's head. Honestly, a very odd step but very cool looking. I did it through utter luck. I then had to find these symbols on the map and then see how many scratches were in the symbols room and then put these symbols into this machine here from lower scratches to highest. I then charge my wonder weapon and shoot it on the ground because it lasts like seven seconds and you can't die while it's happening. And then rotate the wheel until it gets to its very end, hit it with my right shield, activate the trap below, run through the trap with the right shield and then hit the telescope with the electric right shield and then it shoots out laser. This map is pretty damn epic. I then pack a bunch of the Spitfire because I'm going to be needing that for the boss fire and then summon a vampire. These guys are really bloody strong. Wrong, but luckily he's really dumb and just jumps straight into my upgraded wonder weapon. If you like werewolves and vampires, this map's pretty cool and I do like vampires and werewolves. Pretty sick map, I have to say so far. I then upgraded the wonder weapon again and got Alistair's Annihilator and also of course Alistair is the person who owns this mansion and at this stage in the story he is our protagonist. I press on this knight here and his soul actually leaves his armor and he will follow me as long as I don't sprint. I then go to another knight's armor and his soul follows me as well and I head to the main area and get the third soul of a knight and then bring these three souls to the pack punch machine and drop them off on these marked locations. Once the soul is at the marked locations, the knights then turn into the knights then turn into soul boxes and I just have to kill a bunch of zombies next to them until all three knights are at the pack a punch. And then a wolf spawns in and I just have to kill the wolf next to the pack a punch. Initiate this rock here and then a bunch of mutated zombies spawn in. And I had to be really careful here. I nearly went down multiple times. I thought I honestly did go down when I got electrocuted because it looked like the animation of Dying Wish. But I completed that lockdown, got the homunculus from the mystery box, and now we're onto the boss fight where we get the big bad wolf this time. This guy is awesome. I'm more of a vampire guy myself, but I can appreciate a good werewolf. Honestly, a vampire boss would be insane though. So for this boss fight, I just had to move the statues until they lined up with the green square. Really simple, not much skill in that. I just had to press on it and just had to make sure that the werewolf did not attack me because he goes invisible and charged you just like he did there but because i was in the green square he got trapped in the green square with me and i have silver bullets and a fully pack a punched smg so i take him out the first time and i'm just going to do that one more time again if i see a puff of smoke i am just running in any direction because that means he's gone invisible and he's going to try and get me but i get the green square again this time i initiate stock option the werewolf actually hit me out of the square there which was kind of rough i might have been able to finish him off here but i did get a ton of bullets into him before the zombie side pushing 
me. I was using Widow's Whale, which is insane perk, by the way. It makes things a lot easier. And then I just had to line up the statues again, and then I took out the Werewolf, which was absolutely awesome. Dead of the Night, a really fantastic map, in my opinion. I love it. Now that the trial has been completed, an artifact appears. The butler is then taken under control by the cult again, whilst the other characters are investigating the artifact. The butler kills them, which is fitting for a character, played by an actor who played Tywin Lannister. Instead of the Red Wedding, it's the Red Manor. Dude's still got no honour. Thankfully, though, immediately after Tyrion shoots Tywin with a- I mean, Scarlet shoots the butler. Scarlet is Alistair's daughter. Scarlet was on her way the whole time because she got a letter from her father earlier that day talking about what he knew of the cult and also with tickets for the Titanic. Alistair has been trying to stop the cult for a while. She leaves the burning building and at this stage the order were leaving with her father because during the trial time didn't exist so no time passed in the real world. She tries to chase them down but crashes. Honestly I don't know where Scarlet gets this letter from but it's from her father and it's telling Scarlet to get Diego, Bruno and Sure, for they will help her stop the cult and find her father. Voyage of Despair takes place on the 14th of April 1912 on the Titanic. Scarlet persuades Diego, Bruno and Shaw to help her stop the cult and so they devise a plan to steal the artifact. First, Diego steals a key from a lady through flirtation. Shaw then takes the key and unlocks the millionaire's suite, from which the big man Bruno protects him. Shaw then sends a grenade down to a lower level to kill a guard. Now Scarlet is free to open the safe. She uses her own invention to do so, but at the same time a cult member does some form of ritual to see what these characters are up to. Because they are connected to Alistair and so now the cult are interested in them. Scarlet opens the safe and finds the artifact only for the cult member to steal it. He also steals the key around her neck. The rest of the group confront him and so he activates the artifact causing another trial where only the characters inside the protective barrier are safe from the Prima Materia which of course changes the environment to the undead. It is our job again to complete the trial which will give us a reward which will be a vision making us just a bit closer to acquiring Prima Materia for ourselves. So the map starts with the glacier actually hitting the Titanic. So, so far Black Ops 4 has got old ticks for me for being epic, although we're only two maps in. I then spend the first six rounds in the starting area to get all of my points and then make my way to this artifact here which activates a bunch of Pack-a-Punch Machine locations. I then at round six go down. Probably the most annoying thing is that even at round six if you leave two zombies, the zombies start sprinting really fast. After hitting the mystery box for a while, I get this weapon which I absolutely love. The guns in Black Ops 4 really aren't that great except for a few that are really good. For example this weapon and then of course the rocket launcher is even a higher tier. But I do use this so I can collect the souls in the chest and get the Kraken from a Kraken which is really cool. With the Kraken I can now stand on this circle here and this puts me into a lockdown. It's really simple. In Black Ops 4 you have like a hundred ways to kill zombies. For example in this situation I have my overpowered grenades, I have my specialist, I have my right shield and now I have my Kraken. And then I can't forget to mention the perks in this game are really, really good. I mean, yeah, PhD and then Widow's Whale. After completing the lockdown, I can then collect a Sentinel artifact and then I've just got to do this three more times. And from which a Pack-a-Punch machine will spawn down here and then I have to Pack-a-Punch the Sentinel artifacts. It was a bit awkward here because I Pack-a-Punch my weapon at the same time without meaning to, but I did upgrade the Sentinel artifact. At this stage in the game, I can then go around and collect all of these symbols around the map. These symbols connect to either a planet, the moon, or the sun. So first I shoot Mercury, and after doing so, I then collect the part where the symbol was that connected the two. I've heard a bunch of people saying they don't like this step. I actually kind of like it. I didn't think it was too complicated or hard or anything. Just before going into the boss fight, I made sure I did get the rocket launcher and fully pack a punch it and shoot the sun. The sun is always the last you have to shoot, and then as soon as you pick up the blue orb, it starts the pre-boss fight stage, where you pretty much just have to make it to the other side of the Titanic by removing all of these glaciers that spawned on top of it. And now I can actually enter the boss fight. And firstly, it puts me underwater and I can actually give my sentinel artifact to this tree. I think I'm inside of the glacier. I'm actually not entirely sure, but I really like these weird cinematic on theme moments. The glacier then rises from the sea and a big eye appears, the main boss. And again, I've heard people say Voyager to Spare is a hard map. I don't think it's hard. The boss fight was really simple. I just shot the eye whenever he was about to shoot me. 
And that was pretty much it for Voyage of Despair. I don't know how I feel about the map. I think the theme of the map is awesome, but the layout, because it is the Titanic, doesn't really flow that well for a zombies map and gave me a headache when I was first learning it. But the fact that it's on the Titanic is special in itself. Once the crew beat the trial, the environment goes back to normal and they get their reward, a vision of an ancient doorway. However, because time goes still in the trial and does not exist, the iceberg hits the Titanic and it begins to sink, just like in real life. They then escape on a small lifeboat from which Shaw acknowledges that he's seen the ancient doorway before in a book and knows its destination is in Delphi. The camera then pans to Bruno showing us that he has been under the control by the cult this whole time. This happened before the map Dead of the Night when he was killed by members of the cult and then revived by Alistair using the Scepter of Ra. What Alistair didn't know is that the Scepter of Ra is actually under the control by the cult. Thus, anyone revived by it is under their control. 9. Using Shaw's knowledge, the crew find the ancient door in a cave in Delphi. However, the door is sealed and they don't know how to open it. A voice then appears instructing them to drink the substance in the cave, declaring that it will give them the knowledge they need to open the door. They do drink the substance and are transported to an ancient coliseum where they find themselves amidst a demonstration. The character with the artifact is the high priest and he activates it for all to see. Prima Materia is released, affecting everyone without a mask. For the cult's mask, Mask prevent its effects. We are not affected either, I guess because we are still technically in the cave and this is in our own minds. Our job is to beat the trial whilst all of the cult members are watching for their own amusement. This is the only map in Black Ops 4 that I'd actually played before doing this challenge and I think the design of this map is incredible. It also looks really cool. However, in saying that the steps on this map are kind of whack, there's a lot of little tiny steps and just like the other two easter eggs, I'm not going to show every single step in this video. Otherwise, it's going to be boring. And for anyone, I'm not saying this map is bad at all. It's just the steps are really easy and incredibly random. Once I did get the homunculus and also pack a punch my rocket launcher, which everyone knows, both those things are amazing. And I will say they do make the easter egg a lot easier. But once I do have both of them, I use my firebomb on this poo here that I gathered up earlier. And then it starts a lockdown where I just need to shoot these red things on the trees and the walls in this area. I really like this kind of effect that they did. I would love to see what the map would look like if the whole map was just in this theme the entire time as like a Halloween version or something because the map is gorgeous when the color comes back like you can see. I'd actually heard of this step before I did it and I've heard that it's really painful. I got really lucky though. So basically you get some symbols and then you need to kill a certain type of zombified enemy in an order. So the first zombie I had to kill was a poison one which I found first and then I got a fire one which I had to wait in for. So I'm not allowed to kill any tiger or any other mutated zombie. I have to kill this fire zombie second. I do accomplish that with quite a lot of struggle. And this is where I got really lucky. So the third enemy I needed to take out was one of these gladiator bosses. But at the same time, he trapped me with a bunch of zombies. And you can kind of see here, you do have plenty of time on Black Ops 4, but my dying wish gets activated. I shoot my rocket down thinking I'm just going to die. And luckily it killed the gladiator first. And then my fourth enemy was a tiger at the back. I then have to repeat this step. So first I kill the gladiator. Second, I kill this big, ugly mutated thing. Third, I kill a tiger and then fourth I kill the poison zombie. I like that step. Maybe it was lucky because I did it first time but I enjoyed it. I then had to kill these zombified gladiators next to these electric poles to spark electricity that then groups to the center of the arena. I then activate the electricity which starts another lockdown where I have to kill tons of these gladiator zombies and tigers. I do have an unlimited specialist but I think I took in the wrong specialist because I got really close to going down here and I didn't have my dying wish so I would have actually gone down. So I pulled out my rocket launcher and this thing is honestly better than the specialist at this point, especially because I'm using PhD. And the fact that dying wish gives you a second life, like the perks on Black Ops 4 are crazy. I then get the scorpion weapon and have to shoot these symbols with it. And now if I come over to this position here, I get put into a lockdown. This lockdown is so easy. I honestly think it's because of this rocket launcher though. They probably should have nerfed it sometime during the cycle of Black Ops 4 because this is round 34 and it's one-shotting nearly everything. If I was using a normal weapon there, I might have struggled 
a lot more. And now I can enter the boss fight arena. So this kind of reminds me of Gorod Krovi when you get taken into a boss fight right next to the starting room. So firstly, I just kill a bunch of zombie fight gladiators and then a massive fuck off elephant comes onto the map. And these elephants are actually champions of the nine named Fury and Wraith. So I honestly love this boss fight. It's really awesome. You get to just run around in this massive area and shoot your rocket launcher at this massive elephant. And I feel like it really highlights how cool this map looks and they fit really well with the concept of the map. I do though take out these elephants pretty easy. This was my first time trying to beat this map as well. And although some of the steps I'm not too fond of, I really, really like 9 overall. Fantastic map. And I don't want to be a bat guy, but if this had Black Ops 2 or Black Ops 3 mechanics, I think this map could potentially be one of the best maps made if they change some of the Easter egg steps as well. Because the set out and the theme of the map are brilliant. And yes, that is saying that the Black Ops 4 mechanics aren't the best. I do stand behind that. But after playing all these maps now and beating them, I do really like this game. And I don't think the Black Ops 4 mechanics are bad. I just think some of the other games are better. Once we beat the trial, our reward appears just like on the other maps. And this time it gives us the password to the ancient door and spawns a portal. The high priest and all of the other cult members can see this. And so the high priest goes up and puts his arm through it. I would just like to mention that I really like this chaos story so far. And this guy is really cool looking. He then gets attacked by Prima Materia, only surviving because of the cult special mask. Now that the high priest has gotten his use from all of these characters, he beheads them, which is a really cool way to end the map. Ancient Evil. After the vision of their own deaths, the characters awake back in the cave. Scarlet immediately makes her way to the ancient door where she enters the code that they earned after beating the map 9. The door opens and the real Delphi is revealed. Delphi is an ancient Greek city on Mount Parnassus, but in this game the real version is underneath. Apparently they did this to prevent enemies from finding it. In Delphi an artifact has already been activated and so zombies are everywhere, but they can't move because the character who spoke to us in the cave earlier Earlier, is holding them still. We eventually find her and learn she is known as the Oracle. She tells us to free her and if we do, she will show us where Scarlet's father is. This is another map where the theme is awesome. I feel like the Chaos storyline does this really well in Black Ops 4. It's just such a bloody cool map. So first we activate the artifact and at the end of the ritual, Pegasus literally comes and kills all of the skeletons around. And you can just see Pegasus flying around the map. And eventually I can go up and actually ride Pegasus through a waterfall into the area where the Packer punches. And this is where the zombified version of Perseus tries to kill Pegasus, which is a really weird situation seeing that Perseus actually killed Medusa giving birth to Pegasus in a lot of stories. I then free two eagles known as Akela, which carry Zeus's thunderbolts and actually break a massive crystal which opens the pack a bunch machine for us. Again, I feel like people just don't give Treyarch any props for their ideas. I then upgrade the hand of Gaia, which is the goddess of Earth. And then I upgrade the hand of Herema, which is the hand of the god of the day. And these hands are obviously incredibly powerful. They are the Wonder weapons on this map and they come from gods. I then upgrade the hand of Charon who is the ferryman of Hades, meaning he carries the souls of the dead across a river which separate the worlds of the living and the dead. So I'm not entirely sure if he's a god, which makes sense because he's probably the weakest hand here, but he's probably the coolest wonder weapon. And lastly, I upgrade the hand of Uranus, the god of sky. Probably the most powerful hand of any of the gods and thus being the best wonder weapon on this map. I love these wonder weapons a lot. They stick with the theme of the map really well and they're probably my second favorite wonder weapons in black ops 4 behind the pistols on dead of the night i then hit the mystery box to get the rocket launcher this is three out of four games i've gotten it to beat the easter egg and then i use my other pack a punch weapon to shoot these symbols in a certain order on this wall now in my game i didn't get a cutscene because i'm scarlet but i got footage of bruno and shaw spawning in this room so if you do play as bruno or shaw you can actually activate the wall and enter the cutscene from which bruno gets gets taken control by the cult. He tries to fight being controlled, but they overcome him and he grabs the dagger from the skeleton. He then comes up behind Shaw as he's trying to figure out how to get out of this room and stabs him repeatedly. After killing him, he then pulls out the scepter of Ra and revives him, just like how Alistair revived Bruno. And as I said before, the scepter of Ra is actually controlled by the cult, so anyone revived becomes under their control. Diego and Scarlet are unaware of this, and I'm playing as Scarlet, so I grab the Pegasus 
strike, place it here, and now I can use the hand of Uranos to aim a crossbow at the head of a statue. I then put the spear of my right shield into the fire, walk into the poison trap, hit the crossbow with the poison trap, and then it shoots at the head, and I can now enter the boss fight. We spawn in through the portal, and we see Pegasus fly by. At that same moment, though, the zombified Perseus comes out of the portal and hits us onto this island here. I'm not entirely sure where we are. I tried to find out. I think we might be on the top of the mountain on a couple different peaks. And this is the really sad moment when zombified Perseus corrupts Pegasus' divine nature and turns him too into a zombified version of himself. So I've never quite done a boss fight like this ever. And I wasn't entirely sure what I had to do. But now that I've done the boss fight, I do know. So all I had to do was shoot Pegasus down onto the island that I was on and then use my specialist on him. You'll probably see that I go up a lot of rounds in this boss fight because I honestly didn't know what I was doing at the start here. So most of the time I didn't even use my specialist. I was just shooting him with my rocket launcher. And if you do that, it doesn't count as downing him and, and you go up a round. So I go up a lot of rounds here and I think I was in this boss fight for like an hour and a half because I'm just useless and clueless. But finally, I started to use my specialist on Pegasus again until Perseus gets really pissed off and just kills Pegasus, which is incredibly sad. Almost like a father killing a son in a weird not kind of way. Zombified Perseus is really strong and he comes down onto my island and when he does I have to take him out and the specialist does the most damage on him but anything will do damage on him when he is down. But I do go down and it's round 65 and once I go down I lose PhD and stamina which the zombies are pretty much faster than me when I don't have stamina so I go down a bunch. But on my final down I ended up knocking him down and then I had my specialist available and I took him out. Perseus was actually the one who locked up the Oracle. And so when we kill him, we get the key. When released, she then opens a passageway leading to Scarlet's father. Before Scarlet can go to her father though, the Oracle fakes ill and manipulates Scarlet to stay with her while the others seek out Alistair. The three find Scarlet's father has been turned to stone along with some cult members. Diego on edge decides to see if Scarlet is okay as he is the only one of the three who isn't under the influence of the cult. Before he arrives though, the Oracle peers into Scarlet and takes a piece of knowledge that she needed and only Scarlet had. We do not know what this knowledge is. The Oracle then removes her hood to reveal that she is in fact Medusa. She then has some dialogue where she says the world will be hers. And this is where the Chaos Story ends and has not been continued since. I really like the Chaos Story so far and all the maps it has produced. Don't get me wrong, the Aether Story is the zombie story. But for once, it's nice to have a story without multiple multiverse, time travel, and a story that's a little bit easier to follow, although it may forever be unfinished. Blood of the Dead was such a hard map that I actually made a separate video on it. And so I'm just going to insert that video in now, but in a much, much shorter version. So if you haven't seen that video, you get Blood of the Dead. And if you have seen that video, you can skip to the next map if you want, or you can just watch the shortened version. So I just beat every Black Ops 3 map for the first time, and I started doing all of the Black Ops 4 maps. And I got up to this map called Blood of the Dead. And very quickly, I learned that this is regarded in the community as the hardest Zombies map in Zombies history. And I just want to say, I thought this map was actually pretty epic. Constantly throughout the years I've heard Blood of the Dead is a bad map and so I never really bothered playing it but after beating it I actually thought that was like one of my favorite easter eggs I've ever done. As for the story side of this map the map actually takes place on Alcatraz Island where the crew are actually stuck. They will die over and over infinitely until either Brutus gets Richtofen's blood or Richtofen himself sacrifices his blood to the dark mechanism and this is because Richtofen's blood is special because it's the most charged through element 115 from all of the dimensions hopping. So our goal, get Richtofen to the dark mechanism to get out of this vicious cycle. I then place all of my red dots onto the map now and go back to the warden's ritual chamber. Now you can actually see the summoning key inside of the burnt man's body and we then charge an electricity between us and then we get a cutscene which is absolutely awesome where the watchtower breaks and then electricity comes out the top and then Brutus comes out of nowhere and dude this guy is terrifying. I was genuinely scared watching this cutscene. It made me feel like the ending of this easter egg was going to be 
impossibly hard. Also, getting hit by a character in a video game makes you feel very out of control. So Brutus then locks us up, which is pretty epic to really think about it. I mean, he is the warden of this prison. He then comes and does a speech from which he instructs us that the key is within us, which is our blood, referring mainly to Richtofen here, and that he's locking us up infinitely because this will allow someone he refers to as they to be free finally which I think he's referring to the Shadow Man. He then turns off the lights and then heads out of this area. I do not know what he is guarding. He probably should have just waited outside our cell. From what I know about this map, there is no one else he's guarding unless I am very dumb. And eventually the bird spirit then comes and releases us, which is awesome. And then I can go to this bag here and pick up all of my stuff. And what I do is I just follow the bird. I don't really know what you have to do in this step, but I do know the bird will just kill the Brutus, which is awesome. So the bird takes out the Brutus and then allows us to leave the entire cell block and I can make my way back to the starting room and he will follow me whenever I'm going back to the start room. I do make sure to kill these dogs on the way to charge my shield. I need to have two blasts for the final boss fight. I do have to make my way over the catwalk and that does get a little bit crazy. But like I said, Winter's Whale is absolutely insane on this game. And I don't know if I would have been able to beat this Easter egg without it because this was only my second go trying to beat this Easter egg. Finally, with the bird, we arrive to Brutus and then he becomes like ultra Brutus. I don't even know. But then the spirits help us again. And this time it's the spirits that got the pack a punch and also the upgraded the magma gun. So they grab onto the big boss and then take him in the air. And I can grab my final, final red part and put it into the map. And then I was trying to find it. I didn't know where it was, but there's actually a door that opens just to the right of the map where I can go up these stairs. It's a secret passage and then go through and then enter the boss fight. And now this is probably the easiest part of the entire game. And I'm kind of glad because if the boss boss fight was harder than the rest of the map, then this would be so painful to beat because it takes... I think it took me like two hours to get to the stage, which is very, very long for an Easter egg. And so if I were to fail and have to restart, it just really would put me out. But at the same time, if it was really hard, then it would really live up to the name. And I have beaten Mephistopheles before in Infinite Warfare, so a good boss fight is good, but I could practice that in the boss fight tab. So this boss fight is pretty much, you kill four Brutus, and then you have to shoot these red orbs that are attached to the main Brutus, and then you have to shock the top of the dark mechanism with your shield. And then it's the same thing again, but this time you have to kill eight Brutus. So <laughs> very, very easy. So once you do complete the step again, you shoot the dark mechanism. And now if you're playing as Richtofen, you can enter the dark mechanism. But if you're not, a bot will literally spawn in as Richtofen and enter the dark mechanism, which is awesome because it doesn't make this Easter egg four player then. So he enters the dark mechanism. And then at the same time, Richtofen from Revelations teleports into the game, which is crazy. So this Richtofen actually survived the Great War and has teleported here with a part of the fire element star that can destroy evil. And so we're just surviving, getting the main big Brutus weak, and then this happens. And so then once he does the zap, all I gotta do is make sure I killed Brutus and then we've beaten the Easter egg. And I tell you what, man, I absolutely loved Blood of the Dead. Seriously, some of the most fun I've had playing zombies. And I have to admit, it may be just because I beat it second time and I didn't have to keep restarting. I didn't get any glitches. Maybe I just got lucky, but I really enjoyed it. And it does feel super rewarding once you do beat it because it's so long and it is hard. So although we won the map, in the end, Primus Richtofen actually dies. He sacrifices himself so the rest of them can leave Alcatraz Island. Because like I said, they were trapped. Here. And I've only been following the story for like two weeks and I was genuinely sad when Richtofen died. It was actually quite emotional. But there is one other really important thing to note and it's that Revelations Richtofen gives the Cronorium to Nikolai and Nikolai learns through the Cronorium that they are the problem. And so I'm very excited to figure out what happens in the rest of the story. I will be beating every Black Ops 4 map for the first time. I have beaten nine already and that was awesome. So I've got six more maps to go. And so hopefully you guys did enjoy this video. It was a really weird video to make because this map is so weird because it's so long and just bizarre. But generally, I really like the map and I hope you guys enjoy. Classified. After Nikolai learns that they are the problem, he needs to find the Ultimus crew, from which they are currently on Groom Lake. On this map, I didn't actually get to round 150 to get the cutscene. Instead, I did the main kind of Easter egg on this map, which is to get the Winter's Howl. If you look on Zombies World Records, the Easter egg speed run on this map is to get the Winter's Howl. So I just followed that. One day in the future, though, I might make 
a video where I get you round 150 and beast classified officially. But for this video, I didn't do it. I just did the main Winter's How Easter egg because round 150 is very high and you can't play this game offline on PC. And so it's not my PC I'm worried about crashing. It's the fact that I'm going to lose connection to the service, which happens a lot. So I just thought it wasn't worth it, but I did get footage for the cutscene. And all the cutscene is, is the Primus crew and the Ultimus crew meeting up with each other. And then Nikolai telling them that they need to get the Agarthan device to set things right. Nikolai doesn't mention the fact that they all need to die for this to actually work. They already have the summoning key, so all they need is the Agartha device device and to all die and then they can create a world without any corruption. Alpha Omega. The Primus and Ultimus crew both travel to Alpha Omega, where a piece of the Agarthan device, known as the Elemental Shard, is located. Our goal in this map is, of course, to retrieve this Elemental Shard so we can build the Agarthan device. So Alpha Omega is probably my favorite map out of all of the Ether maps, just because it's simple and there's not many steps. So firstly, I turn on the power and get the pack a punch up. I then grab the Galvanocles, which are awesome on this map. You guys, if you watch my last video, know that I love new Nuketown, so I do like how Nuketown is a part of this map. I don't think it's the best setup, but I like the Easter egg a lot. Using a TV on the map, I then have to put in the time on these analog clocks, and if I do it in this location, I get a free ray gun mark too. I then find the red crawler and bring him all the way to this window here, and then I had to find mannequins with their heads slightly tilted off and interact with them. This would then start a lockdown, from which afterwards, the mannequin would disappear and only a part of him would be left behind. I had to do this three times, and then I could actually add these parts onto the mannequin here. I then added the code 3279 into this pad here, which made all of these zombies walk for the next five minutes. It activated Undead Man walking. I did this so I could find the orb around the map and take it very easily back to the mannequin. Once the orb reaches the mannequin, then the soul that was within the mannequin, which was Peter McCain, then goes into the orb. And now I can start the boss fight. Firstly, I just have to kill these mannequins running around the map. And once I kill a certain amount, the Avogadro will spawn in. He is of course from transit i have gotten to round 100 on transit and he was very easy to take down whenever he spawned in but this version of the avogadro is actually really strong especially as you can see right here he actually activated my dying light and was doing tons of damage whenever he hit me so i had to actually shoot him a lot this next step is again i just have to kill a bunch of zombies next to the soldiers and make sure that the avogadro does not stop the soldier nor does he kill me like he just removed my dying wish then finally i can come back into the boss fight arena and i do get trapped by these zombies here but it actually worked really well because i bring out my sword killed all of these zombies at once so now they have to spawn back in and knocked down the avogadro with my sword and then all i've got to do is shoot him with my ray gun mark ii i do have to reload here so i smack him with my galvan knuckles and then continue to shoot him until he gets trapped and the door closes on him we do transport the entity to the hanford site and now we can grab the elemental shard the thing that we came here for we can now start to build the Agartha device, but there's a slight issue. Monty becomes aware that we are trying to do this, and then Maxis becomes aware that Monty has become aware and sends Eddie and Samantha to the cruise, and also a message saying that Monty knows. He then gets absolutely destroyed by Dr. Monty, and Samantha proceeds to get really pissed off, and she tells Eddie that they will fight the Great War and avenge Maxis by killing Dr. Monty. Tag to Toten. So Nikolai, who is in charge right now, because he currently has the Cronorium, tells the rest of the characters that the Victus crew will actually get the Agarthan device for them. And so they can just chill, have a good time, and share some stories together around the campfire. Really what Nikolai was doing was cherishing the last moments with his friends. He knew that once they had the Agarthan device, they would all have to die. Now, I've actually never played Call of the Dead. I'm actually really excited because in January, I'm going to try and get to round 100 on every Black Ops 1 map. It's actually impossible to get to round 100 on Call of the Dead, though. But I would definitely try and go for a high round on it. And I'm genuinely very excited to actually do that. But for now, we're playing Tag to Toten, which does take place, I think, like I said, I haven't played Call of the Dead, but on an extended version of Call of the Dead. And the first thing I do is turn on the power, get the blue rock and give it to the hermit now the hermit is actually pablo marinus he is a once and future hero of the great war and he actually helps us rebuild the agarthan device in exchange for us helping him bring him stuff because he's scared at the top of the lighthouse i then grab samantha's music box and get the wonder Wolf dg i then knife this board here which reveals a safe
safe, usually dynamite to explode it, and then pick up the seal of duality. I add the fuse to this door here and then charge the fuse by killing electric zombies next to these electric plant things. And now I can grab another elemental shard. I give the seal of duality to the hermit, which causes a lockdown, which is really easy. I just run around in circles in the lighthouse. He then gives us it back, but it's changed. And then I grab the rocket launcher. I think that's four out of eight of the maps that I use the rocket launcher, but I couldn't actually upgrade it because the stage that I was up to actually packer punches the seal of duality whenever I go up to the packer punch machine. So I pack a punch the seal of duality three times just by giving it souls from the zombies. And now I can make my way across to the golden pack a punch machine and do my last seal of duality. So this whole time I couldn't upgrade the pack a punch. So I was panicking going into this. this. This was my first time playing the map. But like I said, all the way on Voyage Despair, you have so many things to work with on this game. You have Gobblegums, Samantha's Musical Box, Specialist, Uriah Shield, and then lastly, of course, the Wonder Wolf DG. Once I pack a punch the seal of duality, for its final time, it then moves and I have to stay in its circle. I do go out of its area for a little bit here and then I get a boost onto the boat. The DG Wonderwolf is really good. All I've really got to worry about is ammo here and also falling into the lava in certain spots. This seal of duality travels for ages and it eventually goes to the very top of the lighthouse where I have to take the zip line. I purposely take the zip line super late so then I leave the seal of duality's area late as well because I have to actually wait for it to come over. You don't really take that much damage, to be fair, when you're outside of it. So I just wait for it and get back into it. And in this situation, I was kind of getting a little bit worried about ammo. So I started using my rocket launcher. I shouldn't have done that. I ended up wasting all of my Widow's Whale and then going down. Luckily, I had Dying Wish. You'll probably notice that I use almost the same perks for every single map here because there are a few clutch perks that are just broken, really. And then this is the last moment where the Seal of Duality actually stops and slowly closes in. I used my sword at first and then I ran out of my specialist so i had to use my wonder wolf dg and so i absolutely spammed that because it's not the best wonder weapon in the world but it's, it's not horrible and literally as i run out of ammo and i probably would have gone down i complete rebuilding the agarthan device and i can actually go and pick it up now i give it to the hermit and from the sun deck i can actually see him open a portal from which pablo marinus travels to the great war we can then see the agarthan device come down from the lighthouse and so we go to the forecastle of the boat and pick it up so so with the Victus crew getting the Agarthan device for us, we can finally use it to destroy the summoning key, destroying all universes touched by the Apothecans and Element 115. All that is left is for us to die. Nikolai did poison everyone and then he gets Samantha to shoot him in the head. And then that, my friends, is the end of Black Ops 4. I had a lot of fun making this video, which I guess just shows that the game is a lot of fun. I really like the whole chaos thing going on in Black Ops 4, even though I know that a lot of people don't, because the focus went off the ether story, and I can get that, because I'm going to be completely real with you guys. I really liked where the Black Ops 3 ether story was heading, but in Black Ops 4, I can kind of get the criticism that it gets. I also just feel like the maps that the Aether story were on were weaker maps than the Chaos ones. But with that all said, I enjoy zombies a lot. Black Ops 4 isn't my favorite zombies game, but it's definitely a zombies game that I really enjoy and I will come back to.